This video, which will begin shortly, will focus on three facts, all too short for their own video, pertaining to the names of the Second World War. I hope you enjoy it. The Molotov Cocktail A glass bottle full of gasoline and stuffed with a burning cloth. Due to the ubiquity of its ingredients and the ease of concoction, the Molotov cocktail has become the weapon of choice for anarchists, rebels, and rioters across the world. Although it is probably impossible to trace the origin of this incendiary device itself, we can trace its etymology. The name Molotov cocktail was conceived 82 years ago in Finland, the land of hot saunas and drinking alone. In the midst of the Winter War, the Soviet attempt to invade Finland in 1939, Soviet bombers unleashed a particularly brutal bombing campaign upon the Finnish capital, Helsinki. In the face of international scrutiny, the Soviet foreign minister, Molotov, outright denied that the Soviet aircraft had dropped bombs at all. Instead, he claimed the bombers had dropped food aid to aid the Finnish proletariat. With a sense of humor as dark as their winters, the Finns began to refer to Soviet bombs as Molotov's breadbaskets. As the war progressed further, the Finnish people received many of these breadbaskets courtesy of Molotov. In gratitude, the Finns felt they had no choice but to reciprocate the Russian gift-giving. Knowing of Russia's famous proclivity towards alcohol, the Finns decided to give back in the form of a special cocktail. To the terror of Soviet tank crews everywhere, the so-called Molotov cocktail was liberally distributed by the Finnish soldiers. It was said to be a drink that went perfectly with the Soviet food parcels. Are any of you viewers aware of Pete Buttigieg, the failed Democratic presidential candidate? His campaign failure reflects a universal truth in politics. Simple names win elections. This fact can be considered very troubling when you consider that Adolf Hitler very narrowly avoided the name Adolf Schickelgruppe. You see, although Adolf Hitler's paternity is uncontested, his father, Alois, was born out of wedlock. For the first 39 years of Alois's life, he was known by his mother's surname, Schickelgruppe. However, in 1876, he gained permission to legally adopt his stepfather's name, Heidler, transcribed Hitler. It should be noted that this request was only granted to Alois after it was sufficiently demonstrated that Mr. Heidler was in fact Alois's biological father. While you are welcome to research this yourself, I have come to the conclusion that all other theories of Alois's parentage are quack. However, had Alois never undertaken this name change, or had proof of his paternity been deemed insufficient, Hitler would have been born Adolf Schickelgruber. While I don't really like alternate history, I am confident that this surname would have jettisoned his prospective political career. After all, who could yell Heil Schickelgruber without snickering? Operation Barbarossa needs no introduction. Germany's attempt to invade the Soviet Union at the cost of millions of men. However, it is not the operation I wish to focus on, but the name Barbarossa. You see, the name Barbarossa was not chosen at random. Instead, it takes its name from a mighty long-dead German emperor who was prophesied to return to life again in order to unite the German nation. The Emperor Barbarossa was Frederick I, Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire. 
In his long reign, Frederick had managed to establish his absolute authority over the German and Italian polities of the empire. For those of you unfamiliar with the HRE, this undertaking was the medieval equivalent of herding cats. Even after achieving this impossible task, Frederick was not one to rest on his laurels. When Saladin conquered the city of Jerusalem, Frederick took up the cross and organized a mighty host of men. Taking the land route to Jerusalem, Barbarossa decisively crushed both Greek and Turkish armies which opposed him. Rumors of the great army terrified Saladin to such an extent that he prepared to withdraw from Jerusalem without contest. Fate, however, was not prepared to grant the aging emperor this final triumph. As he crossed the Salif River in modern-day Turkey, the emperor was overtaken by a strong current and drowned thereafter. Without his leadership, the great host quickly fell apart, many of its soldiers choosing to return home. Although the Third Crusade, which this army was part of, could not entirely be described as a Christian defeat, Barbarossa's death ensured Saladin's mastery of Jerusalem. Domestically, the emperor's death returned the German nation to a state of disunity. Over centuries, a great myth spread across Germany that Barbarossa was still alive, deep in slumber. At an unknown hour, the great man would awake from his sleep once again to unite the German nation and restore its former greatness. Hence, Operation Barbarossa. <laughs>